Hello everyone. The first three albums of Stormwitch were re-released on vinyl in October. It's not the first reissue, but I thought some of you may not have heard of this band and it's a good opportunity to talk about their early days. In this issue of Metal Hammer magazine 1984, it was announced that a new band called Stormwitch just recorded their debut album. The advertising read, The Black Metal Sensation from Southern Germany. In 1984, black metal was not yet the definition of a musical genre. It just meant that the lyrics dealt with Satan, demons or witches. Burning the Witches by Warlock, for example, was called black metal then by the reviewers simply because Doro was singing about witches. The music of Stormwitch was melodic power metal, we'd say today. But you have to remember this was before Halloween, before Gravedigger and even Running Wild just worked on their first album when Stormwitch started playing this music, so they were among the first. On the album Walpurgis Night, they are very close to the new wave of British heavy metal. Drums, bass, guitars, cymbal production, it sounds quite alike. This final reissue comes with a lyric sheet and also a poster of the amazing artwork. A witch standing at a fire, wearing leather boots, lots of rivets, carrying spiked steel balls while madly screaming at you. That's as metal as it gets. The vinyl color is called fire splatter, which means transparent with a few yellow and red drips. Doesn't really impress me, but it's the music that matters. The second album, Tales of Terror, was released in 1985. This is available in orange, black, marbled vinyl, which looks really good. Otherwise, it has the same details with poster and lyric sheet. Uncertain if German metal would sell abroad, the band picked English stage names. Stefan Kaufmann became Steve Merchant, Peter Langer became Pete Lancer, and so on. The album is a bit more round than the debut, with interesting lyrical subjects ranging from Edgar Allan Poe's Mask of the Red Death to Arabian Nights. Avoiding fantasy metal cliches, they played straight ahead four minute songs, but with melodic qualities. In 1986, the third album, Stronger Than Heaven, was a step into a more melodic direction. The next albums would become even softer, until the band arrived at the pop music genre with the fifth LP, Eye of the Storm. In an interview at the time, the band referred to influences like Brian Adams, Boston and Bruce Springsteen. You understand why I prefer to talk about the first three albums. Stronger Than Heaven is still relevant to metal, and ten years later Hammerfall covered the song Ravenlord from this album to introduce a new generation of fans to Stormwitch. I settled for good old black vinyl here. The cover artwork is a photography again. Remarkable, because in the 80s most bands used painted cover artwork. However, Stormwitch arranged a session with three witches, fork, a skull and a big cauldron for the witches brew. I like it. Enough for today. Check out these records if you miss them in the 80s.